Hello and welcome to How Did They Do That? A show where we pick out a small detail, effect or interesting moment from a game and break down how the game's developer achieved it. Today we will be looking at the original Spyro trilogy and how they achieved their fogless, detailed, expansive environments. To truly understand the ingenuity behind this effect, we first need to understand what draw distance is and how it affects performance. In short, draw distance is how far away from the game camera you can see. In today's games, this is rarely an issue due to our improved hardware, but the method we will be exploring in this video is still very much in use to this day. Traditionally, developers would use fog to mask the limited draw distance, by which I mean the world you see would fade out the further away it got. Most developers at the time of the fifth generation of consoles either found a balance between performance and draw distance, or used smaller areas with hallways or doors to limit the amount of polygons rendered. However, in Spyro's case, there is rarely a moment where fog is used for anything other than aesthetic reasons, and the worlds are often large and open. But how exactly did they achieve this? Well, in short, they used an, at the time, innovative method called LOD. This stands for Level of Detail. To effectively explain this, I need to quickly cover what makes up the visuals of a level. A level in Spyro has two main components, ignoring collision. The first is the level's model or models. This is the 3D polygonal representation of the environment. The second component are the textures. These are applied over the top. These come in two different sizes, showing a higher resolution closer to the camera and a lower one further away. Used correctly together, these elements can create a believable world, making flat faces appear as things like wood, grass, stone or even lava. In Spyro, each level is quite large and pretty detailed for the time. In order to render the whole level at this quality on the PS1 would dramatically reduce the frame rate of the game, likely rendering it unplayable. The aforementioned LOD method, however, cleverly skirts around this obstacle. For Spyro, each level has two main models, as well as props, but they will only ever appear when Spyro is close to them. The first main model is the high detailed environment with all of the texture maps applied. The second model has a much smaller polygon count and is vertex painted, just coloured, instead of textured. This second, simpler model is much quicker to render and the vertex colouring is a lot less resource hogging than rendering all of the texture maps. The game engine is programmed to fade between the two different models at a certain distance, similarly to how fog works in other games. This means that models don't pop in or even fade through fog, but actually appear to increase in detail as you approach. In the real world, our eyes allow us to see detail close up, but the further away something gets, the less detail we see. This means that the LOD method not only elegantly solves the draw distance issue, but actually mimics real life. And that about wraps it up for today. Is there an effect or detail you've seen in a game that's had you wondering? How did they do that? If so, be sure to leave it in the comments below and we may just cover it. Thanks for watching. Ta-ra!